Baja, you either love it or you hate it. That's how it is down here. I mean, it's just great to see uh, an environment where so many people are passionate about one specific thing, so like off-road racing. You know, I think that's always a cool thing, just to see how many people get that amped up about it. People come here from all over the place to experience some of the longest and also most brutal terrain that there is to race out there because of just the elements that Baja throws at you. If you're gonna be dumb in Baja, you better be tough. I've raced the Baja 1000 25 times. Every time I ride down here, I learn something new and it's wisdom that's hard won. Remember, it's uh, half of the, of the race is at night. So we're, too, we're just waiting for this kind of crazy girl that they said that she's running a uh, iron girl. Ray, so we should want to see what it, if she gets here, yeah, hopefully she does, right? <laughs> they say, live, eat, breathe, sleep, Baja. My name is Liz. I got into dirt bikes because of a now ex. When I first saw the dirt bikes, I got super excited and was like, oh, I want to get on a dirt bike. and. For whatever reason, he just wasn't really all into that idea, so that went on for years, and I just kept pushing, like, I want a dirt bike someday, I want a dirt bike someday, and then I learned behind his back. Started racing about four years ago. Uh, last year, this opportunity fell into my lap. When I finish the 1,000, um, then I will be the first woman to have soloed the series, so, because I already did the 250, uh, the 500, and the Tijuana race. She's always someone that I think if she sees something that looks really cool, she wants to try it. So she, she did that and um, just fell in love with it and it all kind of went exponentially uphill from there. She just loves setting really, really uh, high goals for herself and challenge herself to these really inspiring levels. I think that she's, she's physically capable of doing it. Um, she wants it so bad that I hope that she'll be able to like say no if she feels that she can't do it, you know, instead of just pushing. But maybe that's the whole thing, like maybe that's exactly why she's doing it and all these other people are doing it, you know? It's like when other normal people think that like, no, I should probably stop, they're the ones that keep going. Well, she was stronger from the very beginning. She was my tomboy. And when she was a little girl, she always uh, did crazy things, but she was always the best whatever she tried. You know, when the girls are small, they have a dreams. And as a parent, we have a dream. And sometimes the dreams are not the same. But I learned that whatever my girls are doing in the life, their dream have to be my dream and I have to just pray that whatever they do, they're happy. Of course, yeah, I'm trying. But uh, sometimes I'm so worried about it. Because now she says she's something putting her life on some kind of edge sometimes. Sometimes it's too much, but my mom, she's not crazy. She's, uh, she's trying to do something what she likes to do. The people without their passion, without their hobby, they're poor people. They have to have something in, in, in their life. Sometimes I think about how far I've come and I'm like, wow, like, this is it. It's, it's the grand finale, so maybe it's meant to be. It really just takes a village, so there's a lot of people that have come together for this team. I'm uh, 61 years old, and I've been down in Ba. My first Ba 1000 was 1987. Solo's a, a totally different deal, um, because when you have a team, you only have to concentrate on one your section and when you Ironman it you have to memorize the whole course that's the whole key memorizing the whole course because when you're in dust you know you don't have to see the terrain to know what's down there we're down here to have a good time and helping Liz follow her dreams soloing the Baja 1000 I think if anybody can do it she can definitely do it um, she's really strong Mentally, like I said, she's in really good shape. She's been doing her homework, coming down here pre-running. Um, I actually, for this race, I'm lucky enough to have uh, Jimmy Sones, who's practically a legend down here, um, who gave up race offers to see me to the finish. Jimmy knows this terrain like the back of his hand and um, knows exactly where, where I would be and what areas I'd be going through and has a lot of good advice to offer and, um, you know, is down there looking over my race bike. 
I'm here with Liz Cars as her support. Uh, we are chasing her the entire race course because it's important not only to Liz and her family, but to all of us who are supporting her that she gets to the finish line and we're gonna make certain she gets to the finish line in the right time. Everything's there together, but you know that her most difficult competitor isn't all these other motorcycle racers, it's the Baja Peninsula. And it's a merciless competitor. And making a few wrong decisions or taking a few risky maneuvers, it can bite you. Liz Cars is more resolute in her determination to finish this race and do well than probably I ever was. And she rides beautifully. She really, she really is a level above most gals that I've ever seen on motorcycles. I think it's definitely a male dominated sport. So I think people are just so, you know, they're really excited that a woman's doing it. I think in general, like if a, if a woman's doing something better than a guy, it creates some, some tension. But you know, of course, physically too, you know, being a female on a 450X is definitely, um, I just have had to prepare strength-wise because it's not a light bike and to pick it up or ride it, like I was saying, you know, requires a lot of strength. Yeah, I mean, other than that, I think, you know, the playing field, uh, you know, the, the girls out there are just kicking butt and um, as far as like an athlete standpoint, you know, I think it's definitely evened out. I mean, the guys are definitely stronger riders and a lot of areas, but, um, you know, ultimately I feel like girls have a, have a will to survive that, you know, will hopefully help me out all the way to the end. <laughs> I think she has a great chance of, of, uh, of moving up in the, in the ranks with the guys. Because <laughs> they, they don't like to get beat by a woman for sure. And uh, she's doing it to a lot of them. I think it's awesome. I think it's great that um, there are strong women out there that can prove that they can come out here and do this. Um, you know, a lot of the women don't get credit for, for coming out here and, and showing that they can do the same thing as the men can do and have fun and have a good time at it. So I'm really excited for her. I hope that uh, more women coming up will, will get involved and do this kind of thing, come out here and race Baja. I don't think there's really ever a perfect way to prepare for something like this because you, you know, back home I would never go out and just ride for 32 hours. But what I've learned with these races as I progress, like from the 250 to the 500 and now to this one, I just, you really don't know what your body is capable of until you have to get to that point and push yourself to just keep going because, you know, you might be tired after 100 miles, but then, you know, you still have 300 more to go and, you just gotta keep going and... You know, it pushes your willpower to such a point where like there's not many scenarios as a human being where you can really be like, this is what I'm capable of. Like this is just how far I can go. There'll be a lot of people on the race course, but you go out there and you're also very alone for long stretches of time. And so it is kind of a battle. You just have to like focus and just get through it. And um, it's one of the instances that sometimes I wish I was lucky enough to have a co-driver or a navigator because, you know, when things get tough out there or you're in a section that you know is going to be challenging or you might get stuck at or you just are beat up, you know, just have somebody to look at and talk to and cry to or laugh with or just change the subject, you know, but I was actually feeling pretty good, keeping a good pace. Um, all the way through the halfway point, um, felt really strong and just, I mean, my body was getting really sore, you know, through the whoops, like I knew it would because it's just physically challenging to hold yourself up through things like that. But um, the more I stayed ahead of the trucks, I just knew I was gaining ground. So it was just in my head, it helped me push and push and push. I mean, it was just treacherous and every single mile I gained in there just seemed like the longest mile of my life. When we saw her, I mean, just for a flash, it seemed like, I mean, maybe a minute, not even, filled up her camelback and off she went and that's it. Oh, seeing people after miles of not seeing people is just such a relief. <laughs> Towards the finish, I started hallucinating, I think probably around mile marker 578 or so, which is probably an hour or so before 
I start to saw sunlight um, after being in the dark for so long and pushing your body to the extremes. Uh, my mind was playing tricks on me and I kept falling asleep on my bike and I had to like force myself to stay awake because, you know, with one blink of an eye, a rock could come out and throw you off. And every time my bike went down, it just got heavier to pick up. So every time I didn't tip over was just a little victory because just, you know, uh, that much more fatiguing to get it up off the ground, especially in the silt. When I saw the, the sunlight in the morning, I knew I'd survive the night and it was just pretty much, you know, home stretch, just pushed to the last, last mile. So definitely had to dig down really deep. Even in the last 80 miles or so, I think I tipped my bike over one last time uh, in, the, in the Ojo section and on a hill climb, not because it was necessarily particularly difficult, but it was just a very steep hill and I could barely hold on to my bike anymore. And when it tipped over, it pinned me underneath in between a rock and the pipe was burning through my pants and it was just so heavy to wiggle myself out from underneath it and I started crying and screaming but I heard a car was approaching and I was in the middle of the course so I had no choice but to get out from under it because nobody was going to pick up my bike off of me and just dug down to every ounce of energy that I possibly had and got myself out, pushed the bike back up and told myself, you know, you didn't come this far to time out now and I knew it was crunch time and I would never regret timing out this close to the finish and if I didn't give it everything I had and I believe that she will finish the line but like uh, I I was very scared to see her we just know she have to make it <laughs> so I gave Baja everything I had and she rewarded me with a healthy finish and I'm able to go home and come home to my family so it's so lucky I mean 60% of the people I believe that start this race don't finish and I beat that statistic so I mean I'm beyond blessed <laughs> that was definitely one of the hardest things that I have ever done in my life uh, she was beautiful she was strong she was beautiful and I I was very happy I am the proudest mama on earth <laughs> If you study something, you have to finish it. That's the lesson from her to us. It's nice seeing uh, like, even all the little girls and other women that were like, you did it, you did it. I've gotten a lot of positive messages from people that I don't know, that I do know, and the words and messages are just so incredible. And um, I'm just happy that I'm able to leave an imprint for them um, as much as you know other people may have for me. It's, it's, uh, it's been quite a wild ride. She knows what it takes now to uh, stay on the bike. Uh, what, she stayed on the bike 34 hours and 39 minutes to do 800 and something miles. A lot of Mexican people down here look up to her as an inspiration. If you put your mind to something, you can do it, and I think that's really great for the people in Baja. She did a good job, and uh, you know, she got her safe, and. She was the first woman to do the whole series. You know, I still can't believe I was given this opportunity to chase a crazy dream with, you know, my limited experience on a dirt bike. And I mean, there's pros out there and then there's average people like us that just are chasing big, big dreams. And no matter who you are, don't ever let anybody tell you that you can't do anything. And if you put your mind to it, anything is possible. So it doesn't matter how rich, how poor, if you're a pro, if you're not a pro, um, with the right amount of support, with the right people in your corner, and just digging down deep to find out what you're made of, anything is possible.